There's been a joke among game developers for a long time about people asking developers to just add multiplayer to their games. Normally making multiplayer games requires a lot of consideration just to keep clients synchronized, handle networking edge cases such as network stutters or disconnects, and optimize so that the server doesn't get overloaded with data. But sometimes I wonder just how close I can get to creating the just add multiplayer button. I previously made a video about the Python networking framework I made for PixCarts that runs off of the idea of shared objects that the framework keeps in sync, but there was a severe lack in planning in how the object networking would connect with a game's code that resulted in a few messes. I was determined to make a framework that made the whole concept of netcode nearly non-existent, even if it meant committing some Python war crimes along the way. In addition to making a networking framework, I also made a rendering framework for top-down pixel art 3D games, so I thought it would be fun to raise the stakes by making an online multiplayer open world sandbox action RPG to show off the two frameworks together. I've already done a fair bit of work on the project, but the most interesting example is the combat with the slimes. To create a slime, I first created an enemy base class using the framework networking object with X, Y, and Z fields, along with fields for enemy type and health. The enemy is also set with viewer only permissions, meaning that only the server can create or modify it. You may notice that there's a lot of stuff going on in the X, Y, and Z field definitions. This is just using a custom field and specifying how the movement data should be smoothed out for other clients so that it only has to be sent periodically. All of that is managed under the hood later so the position can be set as frequently or infrequently as wanted and the custom fields will handle the data under the hood to reduce bandwidth usage. Anyways, the slime will inherit the features of the enemy network object, but there aren't any additional networking fields necessary. Shobnet, the framework I've made, allows for a separate class for network data and local data, which get merged together in one Frankenstein object upon instantiation. This is Python war crime number one. I can create a local class for the slime and tell it to use the slime network object with a decorator. I threw in some attributes for the AI and movement that only the server needs to keep track of. Then I defined a function for the server to call which handles the slime AI. Movement with 3D physics is handled by the other framework. So it just takes in the slime velocity and computes the physics corrected position of the slime using the world data. Next we just update the network X, Y, and Z attributes with the new position and all the clients will be able to see the result. To handle jumping around, the slime just randomly attempts to jump in a random direction if its jump is off of cooldown. Sometimes the slime will jump straight up, which is how the slime will attack. The landing time can be calculated using a bit of physics. Then we can create our second networked object, the attack schedule. We tell the attack schedule where to schedule the attack for, the amount of projectiles to spawn, and when the event should occur. You might wonder why I would want to schedule an attack instead of just creating the projectiles. Well, unfortunately the laws of physics say that I can't just send a message from Florida to Australia in under 50 milliseconds without running a fiber optic cable through the center of the earth. To make projectile timings consistent, the server can just tell the clients when an attack will occur. Since projectiles fly in straight lines, the position at any point can be calculated from its origin and the time since creation. This type of optimization is the kind of thing that a just add multiplayer button can't include since the solution requires an abstraction that would not be necessary for an entirely local game. The goal of Shobnet is to allow for these types of conceptual optimizations while making them easy to work with. Anyways. Back to the attack schedule object. If you notice, it has the same fields for the parameters we set when creating the object in the slime AI. However, our second Python war crime is hiding here in plain sight. If you set insta delete to true inside an object, the client or server creating the object will immediately send out a request to delete the object along with its creation. This may sound silly, but we've just created a message through the shared object abstraction. Now we can use the onUpdate hook for the network object to send it to a different part of the client so the client can show the projectiles when it's ready even though the object has been deleted from a networking perspective. So now the slimes can attack the players. But the players still need to be able to attack the slimes. Projectiles from the player weapons are handled quite differently from enemy projectiles. 
Players can spawn networked friendly projectile objects with origin positions, angles, and speeds. It's not possible to schedule player attacks without input delay, so instead they will appear for others as they receive the data, which is fine since the game doesn't have PvP. Projectiles from other players are purely cosmetic. When a client thinks a projectile hits a slime, it can tell the server. While I haven't added the checks yet, it's much more efficient to just make the server handle collision validation when the clients say so instead of running updates for thousands of projectiles. For now though, the client just creates the damage object that specifies the target and damage. The damage object is also a message with the insta-delete attribute, which the server can hook off of to apply the damage and deletes the entity if it runs out of health. The validation code for anti-cheat can go in here later. As a result, we now have combat with slimes in only a few lines of netcode. I've really only scratched the surface of the features of ShobNet here. There are a lot more features for handling events, permissions for anti-cheat, and visibility for optimization. If you're an experienced skeptic, PixCarts has the same network interface code and operates similarly under the hood while already proving that the design works at scale. ShobNet is just made to be easier to interface with to the point of being nearly invisible in some use cases. On the other hand, if you just think that multiplayer game development is cool and have no coding experience, you can jump into learning with this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you can learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. It's designed to be uniquely effective by building from the ground up and allowing you to play with the concepts that you're learning. Some people make the mistake of trying to memorize all the keywords and syntax of a language when learning to code, but Brilliant's course Thinking in Code helps you develop your mind to think like a programmer so that you can pick up languages like Python easier and understand how to make use of essential coding elements such as loops, variables, and nested conditionals. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash thefluffypotato or use the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual subscription. So what exactly is the project in this video? Well, it's an online multiplayer RPG with top-down shooter combat and a heavy focus on economics and trade. The working title is Bullet Isles. The world will be made up of randomly generated islands with a defined region system that forces transportation of certain items across regions. Oh, also, since the world is a bunch of islands, you can hop on a boat with a bunch of friends. Is this all doable as a solo developer? Yes, since bullet hells are easy to make content for. If you remember, I was working on almost the exact same idea a while ago in some live streams. Next up would be adding items, experience, and boats so that there's an actual gameplay loop. That said, Yannok and Pix Carts are my priorities for now. This is a bit of a backburner project that I'll mostly work on after Yannok if I have time. As for Shobnet, I will probably release it after Bullet Isles has been sufficiently tested to prove the functionality of Shobnet. Anyways, thanks for watching.